Good afternoon. I would like to thank the organization committee and the scientific committee for uh, giving this opportunity to be again in uh, Dead Sea. Uh, today, the topic is about the immediate implant provisionalization. Hopefully, we can cover all the as, uh, aspects in this. We'll talk about the definition, survival rates, advantage, disadvantage, guidelines, some complication if there, and uh, how to do it clinically. Before we move to the immediate provisionalization, loading into, uh, nowadays is uh, defined or, uh, into, or classified into four uh, different uh, loading. The one which we know is the conventional loading, which is the three months in the mandible, six months in the maxilla. Then we had the other one which is delayed, usually this is after six months, if it's combined with the bone augmentation. Then we had later on the early loading, which is less than the conventional uh, loading, which should be the prosthetic placed before the three months. The usually it's six weeks to eight weeks. Then we had in the last years the one called immediate loading. So even with the immediate loading, there are uh, everyone is defining it. Some of them within one week, others two days, one day, 10 days, two weeks, but there is now consensus about the timing of that, what we call that immediate loading. Immediate loading itself, it can be defined into two, uh, uh, two definitions, either immediate occlusal loading or immediate non-occlusal loading. The immediate occlusal loading, what it's that mean, it has to be in occlusal contact. The immediate non-occlusal loading, which we call it immediate provisionalization, it's our topic today, it should be out of occlusion. So uh, Cochrane defined it in 2004, it's uh, the immediate provisionalization or immediate non-occlusal loading. It should be the prosthesis placed within two days or 48 hours. So they called it an implant prosthesis in partially edentulous patient delivered within 48 hours of implant insertion with no direct occlusal contact. It, it's just for the aesthetic purposes. So. The idea why they, they mention it's 48 hours, they give time for the lab to finish that case. So if you are giving it to the lab, then it should be within one or two days maximum. But if it's, if it's more than two days, it's hard to, mention, to say about it, it's immediate placement, or sorry, immediate uh, provisionalization. So most of them, they are now in, uh, within 48 hours. This is a dead sea, but it's two years ago. We we'll get it from. So the survival rate is strange, from 81 percent till 100 percent. It varies between the clinician, between the implant system, and the types of uh, or the timing of provisionalization. So that's why certain, I mean, uh, survival rates varies. The other things. It's in the beginning, they don't have that good survival rates till the, I mean, usually there is a uh, care for learning. So that's be, uh, the clinician get more uh, experience. They had better uh, success rate. Again, this is the Dead Sea. What's the advantage of this uh, clinical procedure? The most important thing is the aesthetics. And patient comes to the clinic with a tooth or where there is a crown in there. So they don't like to leave the clinic without any replacement. And most of our patients, and they sh I'm sure about Jordan is the same, and other places in the world, they don't like the removal prosthesis. They don't want to have to, uh, a removal prosthesis that they can place it and remove it. So they prefer always to have a fixed tooth or fixed uh, prosthesis. So from that, they will improve the psychological effect and the patient will like such uh, procedure. Other advantage, preservation of soft tissue architecture, because the, from day one, you will improve the emergence profile with that kind of temporary or provisional crown. Less number of visits, especially if it's combined with immediate placement. So if you do the extraction of the tooth, then you place the crown on the same day, you will have less number of visits. 
then it, with that it will be there is a redu reduction in the length of the uh, in the treatment itself. We had disadvantage of this technique. It will have more chair time required. And we know that implant, implant placement doesn't take, I mean, if it's, there is no bone augmentation, if it's straightforward, it doesn't take much time. But the, the things which takes time is the temporization itself, or to do the temporary, especially if it's with implant. So you'll need more time for such uh, uh, treatment. Therefore, it will increase the cost because you will need to use uh, components such as the temporary cylinder and the util or utilization of the lab. Technique sensitive because we are not get used to the use uh, to work in the bleeding area and especially with the implant placement. So it's, we used to do it in the uh, conventional way. It may uh, raise or increase the risk of failure, especially if there is uncontrolled load loading on these uh, crowns. And as you know, usually when you have any kind of surgery, you don't, you don't know where the final, um, uh, final healing, either about the soft tissue itself or the hard tissue. So it's too hard to predict what is our final uh, contours or outcomes. You notice this is case when it's being placed immediate placement after immediate placement and immediate provisionalization with the final restoration, then you can notice some kind of recession that because it was too hard to predict where the final uh, soft tissue uh, uh, contour or such cases later on after a couple of years of, of in, the, in the patient mouth, you might end up by exposure of the implant itself. So although it has good advantage and it's, it helps the patient a lot, but still with kind of complications. So how can we assure that we have good success rates? First of all, we should have this select the implant that has good primary stability in good bone. So if you have multiple implants, and for example, if you are doing it in the uh, anterior area, then you will place two implants or more. These implants shouldn't be singles. It has to be splinted, so that you don't allow for flexure forces on these implants itself. Also, do not remove uh, these timbers during the healing period. So don't try to test if these are stable, this implant or not. As long as the crown is there, it's not moved, don't touch it. So let it be there and make sure that the patient is not utilizing it for uh, function. Implant at least 10 millimeter long because of the study they showed that it's more uh, uh, success rates with uh, 10 millimeters and above. As we know, we prefer always the rough surfaces, again, for the same uh, things. And I don't think so nowadays that we have even the machined implants. Uh, try to avoid uh, the cases with parafunctional habits because there is uncontrolled forces on these uh, teeth and implants. And you notice some of the cases, even there is uh, natural teeth fra uh, fractures or cracks because of ca such kind of forces with the parafunctional habits. All cantilever, uh, try again, there should be no cantilever in such cases for the same, perp uh, for the same reason because there will be more forces on these uh, implants. Uh, we prefer to use screw retained, not necessarily to be all the cases, but if, whenever it's with the screw retained, it's much better than cemented to avoid, again, the cement or remaining cement there. All lateral contacts uh, should be in the bushes must be eliminated, and even it should be all the protrusive contacts should be eliminated. So we try to just to place that one out of occlusion for the purpose of the aesthetics. So uh, we had most of the companies, they provided what they called the temporary abutments or interim abutments. Uh, and that uh, fabricate from different materials, either uh, aluminum or plastic. Uh, or you can utilize the final abutment if you can exchange it with different patients or from uh, old cases, then just sterilize and use it as temporary. The criteria for the, such abutment, 
we had two things. First, you have to uh, establish the finish line for where to place the finish line, either eco gingerly or uh, with the gingival level, or just below the gingival margin, about 0.5 millimeter. And the other criteria it should be, uh, you should create room or space f uh, away from the opposing, which is about two millimeter for your crown material. So this is the abutment should be uh, cleared from the opposing with uh, about two millimeter. A case with, that's been traumatized and uh, indicated for extraction, central incisor. Now either you had your uh, cast or diagnosed cast before, hands, or you can make the putty direct from the patient mouth. So you can have it either way, butty from the model or butty from the patient mouth. This is the butty index. So after extraction and you decide to do it immediate placement, not necessarily to do it immediate uh, placement, but even if it's been extraction and immediate placement, then at the time when after implant placement, select the abutment as we mentioned, uh, we, uh, mentioned before. So with this abutment now, you can mark where it should be cut occlusally and where is your finish line. So with the finish line, the, like this one, it's sopra uh, mucosa or sopra gingival, you should, I mean, uh, remove from or adjust the finish line and we prefer always to be uh, extra oral, not in the patient mouth, not to incur more forces uh, on this abutment. So you do all the adjustment outside, check it again in the patient mouth. If it's fulfilled the criteria which you set it before, then after that just we torque it to, uh, as the recommendation here is 20 Newton centimeter. Then you can fabricate your provisional. You had the putty already. That's the putty index from the, the tooth which was uh, before the extraction. You can utilize different material. Then uh, the, the most important thing whenever you place it, it has to be polished, finished first, then polished. Highly polished that, especially in, uh, in the gingival area. And the cementation recommendation, you can cement it with tin bond or bullock uh, carboxylate cement for stronger, I mean cement, especially if you would like it to leave it for longer period. Then you'll have, later on you can have the final restoration. The most important thing here in this case is you will give the patient the crown on the same day. So the patient will leave the clinic with a fixed crown. And the other thing you'll get the benefit from the procedure is what we call the emergence profile from the soft tissue. So you can contour the soft tissue around it. The one who is asking about Salala, this is Salala. <laughs> Salala in Oman. I'm not from Oman, but I visited and it's really, uh, you know, you can't imagine this is in the, I mean, one of the Gulf uh, uh, countries. So those who uh, yesterday was asking about Salala, we were talking about Salala last night. Uh, another case with the central incisor that there is I mean, fracture indicated for extraction and the treatment final decision is a placement of implant. Again, you can do it with alginate, with a putty. You can make what we call it egg shell, just the outer contour of the tooth. So you, you can do it relining in the patient mouth due after uh, temporary, uh, after selection of the abutment and adjusting that abutment, then you align this eggshell with the uh, autopolymerizing acrylic. So you can do it with uh, what we call salt and pepper. Uh, this is the powder and liquid, just lining the outer surface of the, uh, of the, of the tooth, which will be replaced later on. So this is the, what we call eggshell. You can then, all these flashes, you can remove them and you'll have just a shell. After removing the tooth, if your decision is to place the um, uh, implant immediately, or if it's conventional way after waiting uh, period of the healing, then you go back and place the implant, uh, it doesn't make big difference. But the advantage is here, the patient comes with a tooth, then you can give him, I mean a tooth. Or you can do, do it with the, give him a Maryland bridge as temporary procedure, then you can do the implant conventionally after healing. So you can do it either way. 
after implant placement, then you choose your the abutment. This is the abutment, different abutments there. So now the same thing, where is the margin and where we should cut from occlusally. All the adjustment should be outside. And you have the shell. If you uh, decide to make this shell to be a uh, screw retained, then you make the holes for the screw retained from the palatal area. Now you can add and reline the uh, acrylic shell. Again, with the same technique, powder liquid. Stabilize it and uh, by the handle or by the explorer. So just this is mainly uh, uh, keeping it the outer contour with the adjacent uh, teeth. So this is the autopolymerizing acrylic. So before the, f the final setting, you can remove it because I need just the, fi uh, the uh, kind of contour. I can add and work on it outside the patient mouth. Then you can, uh, uh, this is the provisional cr uh, crown, attach it to the analog, then you can work outside. Now you, this is, you, can, you can have your time, or if it's in the lab, you can give it to the lab. The lab will, or the lab technician, or uh, yourself, you can add now the same, with the same technique using powder a liquid. Uh, before that, you, can, you have to mark where is the contact area that you will not remove it. The same thing, add I, uh, to have the, the contour of the central incisor. After uh, adding of the acrylic, as said, you, t you have to, uh, now, now you do the contour. You can use the heatless uh, stone uh, on st uh, straight hand bees and use the different kind of acrylic pairs also for finalizing, finishing the, uh, the, the crown. You can seal it between the, in the, between the abutment and the, the, the abutment, between the abutment and the implant itself. If there is any deficient area, you can add on it, have more support. Then the most important thing is the polishing of that has to be high polished. If you would like to add some stains, also it can be done with composite stain, you can add on that. Uh, then this is the final, when you uh, insert in the patient's mouth, torque it about 20 Newton centimeters. You can also read, oh, sorry. You can also remove more from the palatal if it's interfering with the patient time. You can reduce, because all this material is acrylic, so it's easy to add and remove on it. Again, this is the Salala, huh? So it's uh, another case with this internal uh, resorption, external resorption. After, after removing the uh, tooth, placement of implant, you had the same technique of eggshell after placement of uh, temporary abutment. Again, it's adjusted the most important. You can adjust it for the screw. Even if it's long, this is easy to, this is a plastic. You can cut from it and remove it. So you can leave it just uh, in the beginning. Then later on, you can adjust it and remove it. It's a plastic, it's easy to be removed. So the, once you do all the adjustment outside, make sure every time you try it in the patient mouth, it has the contour that you would like. You do the final polishing, make that it's highly polished, and insert it in the patient mouth and make that talk. What we mentioned by that, this is, you can notice the preservation of the soft tissue architecture. Then you use, from the day one, you can have the emergence profile. Later on, when you have the fine restoration, it makes the life easier because just you want to copy that emergency profile and give it to the lab. The lab will provide or give you the final restoration according to the provisional you had before. Then you can have, this is the final restoration, which is copy from the provisional restoration.
before and after, before extraction and after implant placement. And they, they had, oh sorry, this is, what is it? And this is our Saudi Arabia map huh? with the Gulf. But in a city called Hail. <laughs> Okay, we have two uh, centralized sites that's been uh, failed and uh, indicated for extraction after implant placement. It's not necessarily you had the immediate placement with the immediate provisionalization. It's the decision of the clinician himself. So after implant placement, you can make the impression and send it to the lab. The lab will fabricate the uh, final, uh, or the, sorry, the temporary crowns. So in the lab, they have the same, the same technique, the one which we do it in the clinic. From the model, they select the abutment. It could be one of the final abutments, could be one of the temporary abutment or the plastic abutment. With their, the body, then they fabricate the temporary uh, restoration. After fabricating the temporary restoration, they will send it the, uh, to the clinic. I'm telling if you can utilize the final abutment or the temporary abutment. So then you talk the abutment after you check them, then you insert this temporary and if it's cement retained like this uh, case, and you should have to cement it. But make sure you remove all the remaining cement. And this between, this is one of the final abutments, but it's been uh, select, choosed, meld, and being used. After temporary cementation, and this is the final restoration. Central incisor, missing central incisor. This is in the healed socket. It's not immediate placement. After exposure, implant placement. Decision again to make impression, to do it in the lab, not in the clinic. So sometimes it's an advantage if you have the lab in your clinic, you can just make impression and uh, give it to the lab, the lab will fabricate that. Within one and a half hour or two hours, it can be uh, finished. This is the cast model. You can choose also, this is uh, if you don't have the putty or it wasn't there, you can select from the polycarbonate uh, uh, crowns. So one of these uh, techniques as what we are doing in our conventional crown and bridge uh, timberization or provisionalization. So you, if you would like to have it screw retained and the axis is, can give you that screw retained, then it's much better to utilize the screw retained rather than the cement retained. Most important thing is it has to be polished and maintain the contact area. So you try it in the patient's mouth and can be cemented. Again, this is a case where the patient comes to the clinic with a tooth. It's too hard to let the patient, if especially a young, uh, young lady like this, to let her go without uh, restoration. Or you give her removal uh, prosthesis. Again, most of our patients, they don't like to have that such temporary, uh, bro, uh, temporary uh, or what we call the flipper, uh, temporary acrylic uh, restoration. Salala again. Mm. Okay, uh, failed post and core and crown, lateral incisor. Extraction, placement of implant placement. In such situation, it's been selected the final about one of the I mean abutments that can be used for the final restoration. If you notice, it's too, it's very short because there was no other of, in the stock. There is no stock abutment, and there is no of these ab temporary abutments. The good thing with this kind of immediate provisionalization, there is no direct load. So, because it's out of occlusion, there is we are not worried from loosening of that temporary. Again, you can select the temporary, uh, I mean, the, from polycarbonate crowns. And you notice that in the beginning, there is no contact. You can add on them after adjustment, after uh, relining of that. You can add for, to, uh, for the um, contact. So this is a restoration in the final and we make sure in all the excursion there is no direct contact with the opposing. We can, most of the time, I, I temporize them with 10 bond. <clears throat> uh, 
again failed uh, Boston Core and Crown for extraction, decisions to place implant. Again, the abutment is one of the previous cases being changed, the abutment. Then you can choose it and use it as temporary in this case. Again, if you notice, it's too short. Sorry. It's too short, but again, there is no direct forces. So we are not worried about loosening of such crowns. You can utilize also the, uh, the previous crown. If you can maintain it and you can realign it, you can use the final crown, the previous final crown, after realigning it. If it's still, you can use it. This is one of the cases. And the most important thing, if you notice here, it was short from the adjacent because of the lateral excursion. We would like not to have any direct force on it. So this is, you can uh, notice more here on the, sorry, the incisal edge. We reduce it just to make sure that when the patient uh, protrude the, uh, the lower teeth, there will be no direct force on it. Before and after. And this was the final resolution. So to conclude, it should be done by good hands, well-trained clinician. Because the most important thing is how to give the patient good occlusion and how to uh, make sure there will be no direct occlusal contact on such single uh, crowns. The other things which is good news, from the studies we know that these kind of restorations have almost comparable uh, success rates with what we know about one stage and two stage uh, implant restorations. So this is good if you have the following the, uh, the criteria and having good hands. The most important things with this case is patient appreciate such restoration. Most of the patients, they really, really like such restoration. Because as I'm telling you, if a patient comes with a tooth, they don't like to leave the clinic without tooth. But again, if it's possible not to do it, we'll try not to do that kind of immediate provisionalization. If the patient can stay without that one, I don't like to give more risk to such implants. I would like to go through the conventional way. But I'm telling you, most of these cases, especially upper anterior, they prefer they, they resist any kind of frustration. Uh, at the end, I would like to thank you all the audience.